this schedule provides a graph of uh, current and contemplated debt that is on the city's property tax levy. Here you do not see debt service for bonds for which there are alternate revenue sources and the debt is abated. Uh, so this is only debt service that is supported by the property tax levy. Um, the amounts in red, we've gone back historically to 2008 levy year to give you a historical perspective. <coughs> The red are pre-2013 bond issues, and that represents the total principal and interest each year for those bond issues. The, the blue is the 2013 refunding issue, which was the original 2010A bond issue related to the MS building that was refunded in September of 2013. And the green is the proposed $4.8 million bond issue that is new money supporting the capital improvement fund. And we looked at that five-year forecast um, on November 5th, and we'll look at it again, but that is a funding source that's programmed in the five-year forecast for the capital improvement fund. The two lines, the purple line is the original 2004 debt service extension cap. Uh, when the city became home rule, the city adopted an ordinance um, indicating that the debt service would be capped at the debt service levy applicable for that year. Um, what we recognized over time and discussed last year was that due to inflation and construction cost increases, that cap um, had created an artificial um, number that wasn't reasonable anymore to continue to sustain infrastructure improvements necessary to maintain the city's infrastructure. So last year, the city council adopted an ordinance reflecting that that cap would be adjusted each year by the municipal price index, which is driven by construction cost increases applicable to governments. So the blue line above reflects the current adjusted debt service cap. And then we make no forecasts on how that's going to change in the future. So we just cap it at the current level, and then we adjust it each year when the municipal price index is released. It, and excuse me, that, that index is set by who? Um, it is it's government related, and it's, it's um, published it's published by the Illinois Municipal League. Thank you. So I'd have to get you the exact Commerce <coughs> Department or Treasury or yeah. something? Yeah, like that. but it is related specifically to construction for government. It, it is a trade-based uh, um, index, and I, I'm also at a loss as to the exact components, but it's based on uh, surveys of construction uh, contracts, and they are compiled and ultimately published through the Illinois Municipal League. So they are both trade-based, but also uh, with a municipal eye uh, overseeing it. Thank you. Thank you. This is just the five-year fund balance forecast that was discussed on November 5th. Um, you can see highlighted in yellow the $4.7 million. The difference between the 4.8 and 4.7 is that for cash flow purposes, we reflect this as net bond proceeds. But in order to cover bond issuance costs, that actual bond issue would be more like $4.8 million to net $4.7 million in net bond proceeds. So you can see that that has been forecasted for the current fiscal year for several years for the capital improvement fund. But down at the bottom, you can see the forecasted fund balance in FY15 is $7.9 million. And so one thing we have discussed is the fact that the $4.7 million is not needed in the current fiscal year and could be delayed to FY16 or FY17 for cash flow purposes. The question is, given the potential for rising interest rates and the attractive bond market today, uh, what is the appropriate timing for that issue? So again, um, the five-year forecast reflects the bond proceeds in the current fiscal year, but they're not needed because of sufficient fund balances. So some of the considerations for bond issue timing reflect interest rate projections. Um, if the bonds are issued now, um, the city would be in a negative ar arbitrage position because the city could not earn enough interest on the bond proceeds to pay the interest on the debt. The, the interest on the debt would be a higher interest rate than we could earn on the proceeds. 
resulting in negative arbitrage. However, if the bond issue is delayed to a later date, um, then the city risks rising interest rates and issuing those bonds at a, a higher interest rate in the future. Included in your packet on page seven was an analysis that was done to reflect the um, potential break even or delaying the bond issue. So the question was, what would rates rise to if the bond issue was delayed to still result in the same amount of interest over the life, the projected life of the bond issue? And currently, the um, interest rate would average about 3% based on current bond market conditions. So we reflect that in the first, on the left side of the schedule. <coughs> And then we plugged in a formula that if the bond uh, issue was delayed 18 months to 24 months, if rates rose to over 3.26% on an average basis, it would cost the city more interest over the life of the bonds than issuing now. So it's about 26 basis points um, would be the break even. So the question becomes, will interest rates rise by more than 26 basis points in the next 18 to 24 months? Um, hard to know, but at least we know what the magnitude would be. The other um, considerations reflect any other anticipated borrowing um, because the city could combine those issues, issue them at the same time and save some on issuance costs. Um, there is a potential for, an, uh, for issuing bonds in 2015 related to the Laurel Avenue redevelopment. So the city could postpone the issue, um, combine them, and save on is issuance costs. And then the final consideration is use of Laurel Avenue proceeds, which will not be considered by the city council until early 2015. Um, but if those uh, Laurel Avenue proceeds provide opportunities for either, either paying off debt or using those funds for capital improvements, that would be a consideration as well. Um, I would note that Dan Forbes is in the audience from Spear Financial. Um, Dan is, Spear Financial is the city's financial advisory firm and Dan works with the city on bond issues and contemplated bond issues um, and this kind of fiscal analysis. So he is available to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, but the staff recommendation is to delay this issue only until the first TIF bond issue, but to go ahead at the time the city issues any TIF-related bonds for the Laurel Avenue development uh, and go ahead and capitalize on the attractive bond market conditions now and hedge against any rising interest rates in the future. So I'll open it up to any discussion or questions. And again, Dan's here if you have any questions for him. The, the uh, TIF related bonds and TIF related bonds in general, is there a difference in placement or distribution of those bonds that significantly alters the cost relative to general obligation or other bonds? I'll take that. <clears throat> Are the TIF bonds being um, issued as general obligation bonds and you're going yes. to use TIF The, the contemplation, Dan, is that they would be the alternate bonds with the, uh, the city's geo backing and the TIF right. resources being the primary fund. As long as that's the case, then the, geo, the market would view the geo bonds as essentially geo bonds and they would be sort of uh, probably rated the same and also uh, sold and investors would view them the same also. So the cost savings of issuing all the bonds at the same time, total amount of bonds at the same time, would it, would it be significant? Is it a percentage of total issuance or is it more of a step function? Um, the costs, a lot of, let's take your costs and you divide them into two buckets. The bucket for underwriters fees probably on a per bond basis. And if you have a larger volume, their um, dollar profit that they need or the spread they need per bond will probably go down slightly. On the other side, um, rating fees would change significantly and hopefully bond council and certainly our fee would be uh, lower also. Thank you. Okay. And it's less work for the staff too, right? Because they have to do everything once instead of doing it two or three times. Thank you. But I asked Elizabeth that question earlier today, and 
the round number estimate that she provided was something on the order of fifteen thousand dollars so it's not going to move the whole city budget needle but it's but it could you know be used for something else that's meaningful well, and to your point the time savings is probably significant because mm -hmm. it's a double mm -hmm. thank you I had a couple of questions I, I'm going to go through. Um, one thing that, that occurred to me is, if you look at the schedule, <coughs> we've got some additional costs in the first 18 months that we otherwise wouldn't have. So right, if we delay, then we don't have to make those interest and principal payments. But these, be, but these, um, these bonds are automatically sort of funded in the levy. And one thing that took me a while to realize is that we're talking about the tax levy year, not the so so none of this is in the current year. It's all going to be tied to the tax levy, which is a year delayed. You know, you make the levy and then you collect it the next year. So <coughs> there's really no budget impact to right. speak of, um, which was my first thought, given some of the other things we're grappling with right now. Um, <coughs> and in general, uh, actually, another question here. Um, 26 basis points doesn't seem like very much. What, what kind of volatility have we seen in those interest rates, you know, day in and day out? I mean, is this something that could happen next week? Um, this year, without having specifics with me, um, the this year there has been a little more volatility. There was a rise, and I'm sure you all probably know better than I if you're tied to the financial markets, but I believe in late spring you saw a rise. And then you had an easing back um, in the fall and to really where we're at right now. I expect if it follows historic patterns, you'll see a little bit of a rise December, kind of January. Um, and then the, of course, as you know, the prediction is short-term rates will start to be raised by the Fed mid-year um, next year. And, you know, I read and I listen. I don't, can't predict, obviously, but, um, you know, the impact of the oil prices going down, nobody knows what the impact of that might be on inflation. Um, you know, it's, it's a guess. But the prediction right now by wiser people than me is that rates will start <coughs> rising probably late spring next year. Of course, that's what they've been saying for the last four years. Mm -hmm. Four more. So, You're correct. <laughs> so, and the flip side is they could go down. I mean, it, it's not a pretty scenario, but it, it sounds like it should be, but it's really not because it would be because of bad economic conditions. So, I mean, there's some risk on the other side that we lock in at a number that turns out to be a little too high, but at least we know what it is. Right. So, uh, where we don't know what it'll be in the future. So, um, So we don't have a decision to make about this. This is for, for input. Uh, any other questions or thoughts or comments? Okay. Um, any objection to the staff recommendation? Okay. So I think hopefully you have a sense of mm -hmm. the Finance Committee's view on this. It seems like, seems like there's a, at least a quiet consensus that uh, not a bad idea so thank you Elizabeth uh, the next item also to be presented uh, by Elizabeth Holub is uh, a review of the capital budget this is also just for dis discussion and input Right. This is primarily just follow-up information from the discussion on November 5th. There are several items in your packet that were provided um, based on requests that came uh, as part of the November 5th discussion. Beginning on page 9, um, one thing that we were asked to do was prepare a list of capital improvement program projects that had funding proposed for FY16 and provide for you the priority as well as the score. And as you'll recall, we went through the scoring sheet that was used um, by the operating departments 
to set the initial priorities and some of those were adjusted in the recommendations that you saw on November 5th. So what we did was we ranked these in by fund and then by the score. So you see it as the highest score to the lowest score uh, with the priorities. And I think one thing uh, in our review of this, um, it really clearly highlighted the discussion that we had on November 5th about the scoring sheet and some um, nuances and some changes that we'd like to make to the scoring sheet to make it more reflective of, of the priorities um, that were reflected in the recommendation. So I don't know if you had any questions, but that was provided mostly for information. Would you refresh uh, memory? What is 1NF? 1NF is the projects that were prioritized as a one but could not be funded with available resources. Thank you. In years past, we've just relabeled those as two, but we thought it was important to distinguish those that were truly scored as a one but didn't have funding versus those that were scored as a two. Thank you. Questions about this follow on to our workshop last month the next items began on page 12 um, we were just asked to provide a couple additional samples of the scoring sheet that was used um, page 12 is just the blank scoring sheet and then pages 13 and 14 provided two that were completed um, I would note that the executive staff met last week to go through some refinements to the scoring sheet. We're going to be making those changes and operating departments are going to rescore their projects based on the changes that we're going to make to the scoring sheet. Pardon me. Yeah, the rescores um, should come back to you at the January 20th finance committee meeting. Thank you. The next item follow up was on page 15. Um, this was a question that was asked to provide some historical perspective of the capital fund, what the budget was and the actual expenditures. But we also added a column of deferred because a lot of times timing of bond, um, bond issues or grant related projects do result in deferrals of budgeted expenditures to future years. So to give you an accurate reflection of the variance from year to year, we pulled the deferred items out that were actually rebudgeted in a future year. To give you an idea of the fluctuations between the budget and actual expenditures in that fund from year to year. Uh, the next is page 16, and that just has a graphical representation of the capital fund expenditures by year <coughs> and by category, so that you can just see um, for the last five years how funds have been allocated in the capital fund to different types of expenditures. Just included the foot footnote on FY12, the blue, which is road and bridge, is low because that is a year in which street resurfacing is funded from the motor fuel tax fund so it's not reflected on this chart and then beginning on page 17 we were asked to provide the five-year fund forecast with additional prior year actual data so these have been revised to reflect three years of prior year actual fiscal year 12 13 and 14 then the projected or budgeted FY15 in blue, and then the five-year forecast following the blue. That'll give you uh, some historical additional historical perspective on those funds. And those again, just include the five, uh, five or six capital funds that we discussed on November 5th. And that is all the follow-up we provided from the November 5th discussion questions comments okay uh, thank you Elizabeth okay. uh, the next item on our agenda is uh, 
other business which essentially refers to the flash report um, and I don't know if uh, how how much uh, in detail everybody went through this but be happy to uh, consider any questions or comments about the flash report well, I actually have a couple of observations anyway <coughs> uh, one is that we are something along the way along the lines of six hundred thousand dollars below our revenue budget for water uh, and since our fiscal year ends in May it's unlikely that we're gonna make that up uh, over the winter so uh, you know that's something we just have to keep in mind for the fiscal year end that that our revenue forecast is not coming in as expected on that item um, and then I guess the other area where and this is more unpredictable, but uh, uh, still meaningful. The uh, real estate transfer tax is about $200,000 behind our projection. And um, while, I again, I said it's unpredictable, it's been behind every month. And uh, unless there's a significant turnaround in a big increase in prices or a big increase in volume between now and May, that's something we're also likely to have <coughs> to live with through the end of the year. So between those two, um, you know, reasonably we're going to come in on the revenue side between arguably seven hundred and eight hundred thousand dollars short uh, for the year versus our budget. And uh, that's just something we're going to have to consider as we go forward. It's that's one of the reasons why I was asking Elizabeth about the the where the cap you know where the money comes from to fund these potential principal and interest payments for the bonds even though it turned out that's not in the same fiscal year um that's how we sort of dis or i sort of discovered that that quirk existed but um we do have to keep that in mind and be careful about uh you know adding to a you know creating additional unbudgeted outlays uh we've already been obviously very very thoughtful and careful and particular about those things so far and I think we have to keep doing that and hopefully we'll find some areas where we can economize between now and May and and bring things in a little closer to to expectations George how do we how do we cover that uh, you know Elizabeth or somebody <laughs> water sales are traditionally very um, they fluctuate with the weather um, and so it really is driven by the weather during the summer. Um, two years ago, water sales revenue was over a million dollars over budget because of a hot, dry summer. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we budget water sales revenue based on a five-year rolling average. So we recognize that in some years we're going to be below, some years we're going to be above, but it's very hard to predict. Um, but I would note that that is why the water fund has such a substantial fund balance reserve requirement in order to sustain those um, ups and downs in, in a very volatile revenue situation. But, but how do you cover the shortfall in revenues? How do we cover the shortfall in revenues? Well, the water, the, water re I mean, the water revenue goes to the water fund, and the water fund has a big reserve. So, so we, just draw, we just draw down the reserve. Built right. to handle, it's right. built okay. to handle those kinds of fluctuations. Okay, okay. So, but if you look at the big picture and you just mash it all together, um, which is the way I have a tendency to look at things, uh, it's, it's revenue we thought we were going to get that we're sure. not going to get. Sure, and, okay, uh, all right. You know, the real estate transfer tax, all that revenue goes to, infra to, to uh, is it still just sewers or is it infrastructure in general now? Infrastructure in general. So, and that's, uh, you know, I don't know, I assume <coughs> we carry a, a reasonable balance in that fund as well. Mm -hmm. So it's not, um, you know, it's not a calamity, but it's something we need to bear in mind if you think about just cash in and cash out. Sure. Across every, you know, all the different funds. So, so I think we're right to be very careful and very uh, prudent about adding current year unbudgeted expenditures. Any other business that uh, anybody would like to bring up for the Finance Committee? Mr. Chairman, 
yes, I have sir. one uh, that's on the regular council agenda that uh, since we have a few minutes mm -hmm. uh, here, I'm going to ask Mike Thomas and Jeff Hall to come forward and talk about uh, ambulance that's on the omnibus agenda because Mike had a telephone conversation with our the <coughs> rep uh, for the manufacturer and there's an adjustment and I don't want the council to think we did a bait and switch because this did go before the Public Works Committee and they reviewed it and the numbers are slightly different than what the Public Works Committee saw or what's on your published agenda. Great. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the Finance Committee. Uh, this evening, city staff is requesting the purchase of a new ambulance for the city of Lake Forest. This is the existing chassis uh, that's out in West Columbus, Ohio, about 20 minutes from the manufacturer Horton. We initially received a, a sales order for the chassis for $47,000. The quote that I had received on the telephone was for 57. The paperwork came through for 47, and we thought, well, we had received a nice municipal discount. Um, this afternoon at about 3.15, we received a phone call, and they acknowledged that they had made a mistake in their sales order, that it, in fact it was 57, not 47. So they, at about quarter to four, sent us a revised proposal. I know it's hard to see uh, on the board there, but it reflects the $57,000 chassis. The chassis typically goes for about $74,000. It's a two-year-old chassis, and we're, that's why we're receiving such a reduction. It's one that's available uh, for, for us to purchase. Included in your city council packet, then, is a quote from uh, North, excuse me, Northwest Municipal Conference. The Suburban Purchasing Cooperative bids larger pieces of equipment, fire engines, ambulances, those types of things. So we're utilizing their bid. Uh, they provided us then the quotation uh, that initially was obviously $10,000 less. So in your council write-up, as it is printed, it is showing a request for $208,000, and I believe 544, I, I believe is the number. That, that number will need to be increased to 218. We have budgeted $250,000 for the ambulance, so we are still way under budget. Uh, and as we have proposed and requested that we be able to sell the existing ambulance and by doing that we will save some fees and we'll obviously be able to market it throughout the country and we believe um, bring in at least ten or fifteen thousand dollars for that unit so our goal is to try to be able to bring this unit under two hundred thousand uh, dollars and return at least fifty thousand back to the capital fund if possible uh, but this was a last minute um, mistake by the vendor and he acknowledged it that it was uh, it was something that he uh, he, he had done uh, inadvertently and we wanted to bring that to you this evening as a as a change so with that I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have any questions you said it's a two-year-old chassis brand new Are we purchasing it new brand new it's a it's a 2012 uh, it was Built for the city of Cumberland, Ohio, for an ambulance, for an ambulance almost identical to the one that we're going to be ordering. And the city of Cumberland pulled out of the, the deal, uh, so they have been sitting on it since, the international dealer out in West Columbus. So their loss is our gain. Uh, as I said, if we were to go out to bid for this on our own today, that chassis would be way north of $80,000. Uh, so we'll be getting it for 57000 and it should proved to be a very good piece of equipment for the city. And, and so once you have the chassis, you'll have it built out to spec? Correct. So there's two components of, of vehicles of this nature. You have the chassis and then the ambulance body. Uh, Horton manufacturer out in Columbus, Ohio. We utilize two of our, excuse me, two, three of our four ambulance bodies are Horton bodies. Uh, they're a very well-known ambulance manufacturer. They make very, very good products. They then will take and construct an ambulance body and mount it to this chassis. So this chassis already is built with very specific ambulance body measurements taken into account. Uh, and it meets all the needs that Horton, all the requirements that Horton has. Um, so Horton's very busy uh, with, uh, if City Council approves the purchase this evening, it's going to take upwards of nine months. Uh, for us, even though the chassis is already built, it will take uh, a good amount of time for us to get in line and wait our turn, essentially. So 
Uh, we anticipate, hopefully, Chief Howell and the staff are hoping to have this by uh, the BMW um, next year. Okay, thank you. Uh, are there any other items that uh, might make sense for us to cover here in the Finance Committee, at least by way of sort of preview? The uh, council packet was rather voluminous, and hopefully there was enough backup material on most of those items, but we're happy to answer any questions on any of the agenda items uh, that you might have. There was a couple of other purchases, but I think like the Public Works Committee reviewed the uh, LG screening um, bids that were received and uh, is recommending approval of those. So I'm not sure what else is, um, might be of concern or have any questions on okay all right um, that concludes the uh, business part of the agenda the next item on the agenda is opportunity for the public to address the Finance Committee um, is there any member of the public that would like to address the Finance Committee on uh, uh, any Finance Committee oriented matters Uh, okay, there being none, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh, did I see a hand? No. Okay. Uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. There is a hand. Do I have a oh, there is? I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. Could you please, could you please come up and introduce yourself? Or? My name is Catherine Duffy. I live in the Middle Fork Homeowners and, um, subdivision I'd just like to know if this concludes any discussion on SSA as well or will uh, that be separate tonight that's it yeah that's going to be discussed at the City Council which will start at 730 okay great thank you sorry to keep you waiting but okay uh, there being no uh, other comments from the public I would entertain a motion to adjourn so moved do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the meeting is adjourned. We will reconvene at 730. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>